repair. I think that is absolutely incredible, don't you? Incredible. Now, did you, know, did you know this morning that part of your brain repaired itself? Did you know that your bone marrow has also capacity to regenerate brain tissue? How do I know this? I'll tell you how we know. You know, we, we, uh, uh, doctors discovered a woman who had had uh, leukemia, so she'd had her bone marrow irradiated. And uh, she had cancer, and she was given some bone marrow from a guy who was a close match. But when she died, they cut up her head. Sorry about that. But they found that she had a male brain. They found male brain cells in her female head. Now listen, my friends, how on earth did those get there? They got there from her bone. Why? Because her bone is constantly seeding cells into her head. Extraordinary. Now, we're rewriting all the medical books, I can tell you at the moment right now. So, uh, not only can the brain repair itself, has the potential to repair itself, but we can get paralyzed rats to walk again. You remember the Christopher Reeves injury with a cut back, cut spinal cord, uh, it was actually in his neck, from a horse injury, and uh, he's paralyzed from the neck down. And as, it, as you know, although your nerves in your arm regrow at three millimeters per day, those in the spinal cord do not. Well, they do now. We've discovered that if you take bone marrow cells from a rat after cutting the spinal cord and you inject those cells into the back of the rat, those rats start running around their cages six to eight weeks later. Clinical trials will be starting in human beings in the next couple of years. If my daughter had a serious car accident and was paralyzed from the neck, uh, from the neck down, I would want her to have some of this stuff in her back as soon as possible. Now, this is incredible stuff. What's even more incredible is this that the, uh, if this was a new drug treatment, how long would it take to get permission from the FDA? <laughs> huh, well, you know about that, don't you? And, by the way, that's not such a bad thing because it keeps some of the rogue drugs out of the market and protects us. That's what it's for. But it takes 15 years to produce a good drug, 15 years of research pushing it all the way down the pipeline to get it out as a drug you can use, right? Guess what? This isn't a new treatment. John, if you need some of this stuff, I'm taking your cells from your bone marrow. This is your property, owned by you in law, and you can compel me by law to put it back inside your body. It's not a treatment. After all, it's your tissue. I'm giving it back to you. And therefore, uh, you can move from animal studies to human studies in just four weeks, not 15 years. Uh, we can grow organs to order. Our researchers have grown a miniature perfect human kidney in the inside of a mouse. Now, <laughs> You think, oh, my goodness. Just hang in there for a moment. Fast urban. Urban is to do with demographics. It's also to do with lifestyle fads, fashions, and choices. Um, and another big issue, uh, remember, I'm just filleting out one or two things here out of these six faces. The six faces is like a big radar screen. You just turn the radar screen and you see what pops up. Here's one thing that pops up, obesity. Uh, did you know uh, that... 250 million people will have type 2 diabetes by 2023. One in three of all newborn babies born in America today will get diabetes by the time they die. One, uh, six percent of the US population is diabetic, including one in four of those in this room. I won't ask for sure of hands. One in four of you in this room has diabetes. You may not know it, but you, you may well die from it. Now, this is a very serious issue. It's a growing issue. It's almost entirely preventable because it's caused mainly by diet uh, and imbalances within it. I'm not talking about insulin um, problems, uh, uh, problems creating insulin for a small child. I'm talking about overload of a body, uh, a systematic overload, so that we cannot carry, uh, we just cannot carry the mass that we have without pushing ourselves into diabetes and producing sugar in our urine producing catastrophic problems down the way in terms of mental deterioration, heart deterioration, uh, circulatory problems, impotence, all kinds of other things. So obesity is a very big issue and it's an, an example of how uh, while medicine is extending our lives, some of our lifestyle sh uh, choices are shortening it, which is why it's so absolutely vital for AARP to continue to encourage healthy lifestyles. Now, here's an amazing thing for me. Two out of three of all those who have ever reached retirement age are alive right now. Here's another. Germany is becoming extinct. So is Scotland. So is Italy. And so are many countries. Why? Because it takes 
Some people can't have kids, so it takes 2.2, 2.3 children per household in America just to sustain your population, right? Well, in Germany, it's only 1.2 children per household at the moment. What that means is, if you have eight grandparents, you only got one grandchild, one or two grandchildren. It means 16 great-grandchildren. I mean, it's not, you're talking about a, a, a progressive shrinkage. It means there's only half the number of children in each generation than there should be just to keep the population stable. So you go through two generations, you've only got a quarter of your population. You go through three generations, you've got one-eighth of your population. My friends, you've heard about the population bulge and the graying of America. What people don't realize is it's nothing to do with... Well, it's to do with lots of things, but one of its things that's to do with is the failure to breed. If people stop having kids, then any society ages dramatically. And that's what's been happening. In fact, in America, you have Hispanic populations which are continuing to believe in parenting. Who have fertility rates which are significantly higher. But English-speaking, white American population seem to have decided to give up on breeding. Same in my country. So you say, okay, well, we offset by immigration. Yes, okay. But I'm just saying, actually, you could argue that a very important part of AARP's care for the future aging population would be to encourage a younger generation to feel great about having kids and to encourage policy changes, tax regimes, and other things that will make it easier for parents to actually have children. Because actually, we cannot survive in a society where parenting has gone out of fashion. We have a crazy world where people are deciding to have children for the first time at the age of 30, at a time when I know as a doctor that fertility is falling through the floor. So there are only 50% of the number of children that should be in German schools this morning, because the rest of them weren't born 10 years ago. What about longevity patterns? If we look at people who are more than 100 years old in the United States, our conservative expectation is that number will more than double over the next decade. So I wasn't joking when I talked about seniors being those over the age of 100. I think we should classify those over the age of 100 with a special status in our society. And there will be over 200,000 of them very soon. In fact, there will be more than a quarter of a million before very long. So why don't we give them a name? Uh, uh, something. You know, I, I said, well, why do we call them seniors? They are senior citizens, for goodness sake. Uh, people are over 100. Um, my, I've got a run of my relatives, is 97, 98, and going strong. She's nimble, she's, she can't quite play football, but uh, no, she's, she's incredible. She, I think she's, both her hips are her own. Uh, she doesn't look a day over 82. My grandmother, was, my grandmother was practicing medicine until she was 84. We were slightly worried about the medicine, but <laughs> actually, you know, she was doing medicals and things like that, so she was working. She retired when she was 84 years old. Do you know General Motors now spends more on uh, health care for people who used to work for General Motors than it does on steel? Perhaps you knew that. And if we look at aging in developed countries, I'm glad you're interested in the global picture, because I am. I'm passionate about it. You know, over the next 20 to 30 years, we will see a 15-fold increase, a 15-fold increase in, uh, in the number of men over the age of six, uh, 60 and a 20-fold increase in the number of women over 60. By the way, AARP is predominantly a female organization. I hope you know that. Um, I haven't heard much discussion of that, but you're mainly a women's group. Why? Because two out of three people over the age of 65 are women in every developed country because guys, well, we tend to die off. Actually, you could argue that one of the, one of the greatest policy challenges for AARP is to improve the health status of a minority group within America, which are men over the age of 65. It's a minority group who are disadvantaged, who have a very low life expectancy, have high degrees of morbidity, poor health, poor quality of life compared to the women who are over the age of 65 who are motoring away until they're 148. 